you See, know, all that kind of stuff. He has a team. You know, he, he, has has a team. team. Yeah. he has a team that's 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 that that knows the machine. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, so now they're they're aiming him obviously to, I mean, the scars for, for the stars for mm -hmm. goodness sake. So they're making sure that he's got the polish to yeah. go with it. They don't want him I to go out saw, and say. I just saw what's her name, Effia. Yeah, you know, she he signed, signed Effia. He signed, he signed her. Signed yeah, to be he signed a bunch of yeah, Ghanaian yeah. artists. Don't boy. No, I don't know about that though. Okay. I'm gonna have to confirm. But I know yeah. he signed R2Bs, he signed um FIA, he signed um some Nigerian he signed um what's this guy's name now? The producers. Nigerian um not no not Sess. Not Sess. No. Sass is signed, he just signed the DJ now, official DJ. It's oh. called DJ. Oh, so, Wizkid's official DJ. Yeah, he has an official oh, no. DJ oh, now. You know, I'm so basically he's late. making plugs, oh, no, no. you know, he's making moves. Oh. And at the end of the day, when the stars align sometimes, everything just starts to fall into place. That's and I'm right. I'm really, really happy for him. Yeah, yeah. take that yeah. advantage, boy. Yeah, two thousand. Nigeria to the world. <laughs> we love you, Wizkid. One day come and join Shout out Wizkid. <laughs> Wizkid Baba. Right. Follow me back. Follow me back. Wow, KFB. <laughs> hashtag KFB. Okay, it's a mini. All right, um, so it's yeah. time for our guest. So time for our guest of the day. Um, so please join us in welcoming Bukola Ogunyemi, a media personality, into the house. Mr. Bukola, welcome. We are waiting for you. Uh -huh. Hello. You came okay with full suits. Hello, sir. Did. Hi, how are you? How are you, sir? Nice to meet you. Feel comfortable. Sit hi, down. hi, hi. Nice to meet oh, you. Same here. Damn. Okay, yeah, we have can all seat. gather around. Thank you. Oh. Joy. So, media personality. Yeah, so what do you do? Uh, um, okay, so Let's I do. Let's tell the world. <laughs> I do online reputation management. Okay, um, reputation management. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do a bit of digital marketing as well, but okay. mostly online reputation management. Okay, what does that involve? and you do that for oh, whom? For, for different kinds of people. For different kind of clients, okay. um, businesses, uh, business leaders, politicians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, <laughs> so like, um, they might need it. What's her name? Uh, now? Olivia Pope. Yeah, like you're like Olivia Pope. <laughs> <Pope. laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, fix her. Only online. Only online. Only online. <laughs> online. <laughs> okay, so how do you He's not going to rig any for elections? For example, like so if somebody had a um, really bad video of themselves that came out, um, how would you manage like a, okay, so, a scare like that? So those are digital footprints. You can start with getting the video the original video offline first. Oh, offline, ah. okay. And then um, you you evaluate the situation, see if your client needs to release a statement. Um, okay. If not, sometimes you just need to keep quiet on some of these things. Mm. Mm. But does yeah. keeping quiet work? Because it makes the people wonder more, doesn't it? Uh, you also don't want to dig yourself into a grave further than you have already. So mm. depending on this, these situations are always unique. So. Uh, you evaluate your options very carefully and then yeah. you decide on what to do. You also also have to um, consider what your client wants mm -hmm. sometimes because some of these clients just come to you and tell you what they want to get done and you, do and you just have to do that. Whose reputation would you like to manage? Don't you know? <laughs> In Nigeria first, yeah. In Nigeria. Yeah. Um, Who needs help? Who needs, who needs no, help? Don't put it like that. Don't put it like that. I mean, he okay, might have somebody that he likes like and he admires and he would like to help shape um, the... Okay, so, so the thing about online reputation management is everyone needs it. Okay. Um, it's not always about crisis. It's also about people getting to know who you are. Mm. There are a lot of people who their, their real um, image is very different from the image the they person. have online. So okay. um, it's everyone, everyone that's willing um, and everyone that's feels they need uh, to get something done online and okay but as you dodge the question Asha, who who would you like exactly. <laughs> <laughs> who would you like to not necessarily because they're doing anything wrong just like maybe who do you think that would would, would benefit from services such as yours everyone basically yeah, he's not gonna he's everyone. opening You're the market out. i need a name Everybody. okay One an name. International person, <laughs> internationally um hillary clinton oh okay yes. But wait, my thing is, you think that, well, how would you say people are accepting it? Like, do you have clients, you know, a lot of clients, in Nigeria, or is it something that people are just starting to appreciate? Because I have not heard of anybody that has an online reputation oh, manager. Um, okay, so in Nigeria, it's relatively new. Okay. It's a relatively new field. Um, mostly what people do before now is to just do social media management, just yeah. get yeah. someone get an intern to tweet and um, mm. post on their Facebook. Yeah. But um, a whole lot of things have gone wrong uh, recently with that. Just a, just like a week or two ago, we had someone tweeting about uh, Naira Bet on Police NG's um, Twitter account. Yeah, wow. the official oh. Twitter oh, wow. account um, mm. of the Nigerian Police Force. So 
such things are, are no longer acceptable. In the early days of Twitter and Facebook, we could get away with things like that. Mm -hmm. Not anymore. So a lot of um, um, reputable people are no longer leaving these things to fit. And, yeah. um, so that's where online reputation management comes in to say, okay, mm -hmm. even um, as per what comes up when people search about you on Google, mm -hmm. um, some um, crisis, some... Um, scandal that had happened in the past that you're probably even innocent of. Yeah. You can get away um, to rebuild your image from there. Mm, so that's awesome. Interesting. Okay, well, looks like it's time for us to take another break. When we come back, we're going to be getting into our topic of the day and we'll also be getting to know Brooklyn a little bit more and seeing what he thinks about the topic. We'll see you in just a moment. Welcome back, guys. You're still watching The Spot. And we've been joined by our guest for the day, Bukola Aguyemi, who is an online reputation manager, among other things, of course. <laughs> yeah, so we've been talking a little bit about that and what it entails. And he kind of dodged who he would like to, <coughs> you know, manage here in Nigeria, but did say you would like to sort of get your hand into Hillary Clinton's online reputation. Mm, okay, interesting. Well, Ian, since you mentioned Hillary Clinton, she ties in perfectly with the topic of the day. And the top topic of the day is, I'm sorry, I just have to take a deep <laughs> breath, <laughs> President Trump. <laughs> <laughs> topic of the day is, I'm sorry, excuse the dramatics, the topic of the day is President Trump. Now, obviously, we know he's not the president yet, he's still the president elect, but there's obviously a lot of, um, there's still a lot of emotions, a lot of noise about the fact that he is going to be the 45th president of the United States of America. Um, and, I mean, there's just a lot to talk about, really, from, I guess, his antecedents to how he got to where he is um, now yeah. and what's going to happen when he becomes President mm. Trump. So, I mean, what do you think and what have you observed about the whole election cycle and how he kind of is where he is now? Yeah. Um, I'm still partially in shock. Okay. Because um, um, it's, it's taken um, a while to to take in. It's, it's taken a while to accept that this mm. is actually really, really happening. Mm. Um, every day I wake up and um, hope to hear something that happened and um, the election was cancelled <laughs> because there were irregularities. <laughs> America is, not, is never going to accept that there were irregularities in their yeah. elections, even if uh, there were any. Um, but really, that's the reality. Uh, Donald Trump is going to be president uh, January 2017. Um, Obama is going to move out of the White House and we're going to have uh, Donald Trump as um, the oldest uh, president, yeah. the oldest elected president yeah. in yeah. America's history. Yeah. Um, we still don't know where uh, this is going to lead. Uh, today it sounds, it sounds like it's going to be presidential. Tomorrow it sounds like Donald Trump uh, the, the candidate. <laughs> so uh, there, there's still a whole lot that's hanging in balance. Mm -hmm. and yeah we just have to wait and see yeah what do you guys think so um i'm trying to remember trump before the presidency right mm. what he was like because before the be before, before the, whole the election yeah, period the whole at all election, okay um <clears throat> electoral period um what i knew of him was you know the the reality shows yeah. that he did um all of his um uh, the, the businesses and The Apprentice and stuff like that. But I, yeah. I don't remember Trump, the personality. Okay. So, like, um, he would often say things um, during the shows. Or, but I, the, the reason why I'm thinking back to what he was like was because I want to know where where the change happened or if there was change if there was a change mm -hmm. so has everything always been in him and slightly embedded and mm -hmm. you know this was just a platform for him to Shared. show himself yeah. or did something happen um i didn't think that america would do this to themselves i i, mm -hmm. I thought that people were going to be um a bit smarter mm -hmm. um i think it's unfortunate because he has incited a lot of a lot of drama mm -hmm. Um, somebody mentioned to me that they felt like Trump simply spoke for the silent majority of Americans. Mm -hmm. um, and all it was was that finally people have the chance and the veil has been removed. So everybody can say how they feel yeah. and stop holding back everything all of these years. Mm -hmm. um, and it's sad that that's what's happened. And the effect of the Trump, Trumpanization or whatever, um, it's just... 
it's sad because I wonder what it's like for, especially the minorities, especially the children, um, the messages that you teach in schools mm -hmm. about what makes you successful. But it's, it's about being a nice person. It's about yeah. working hard. It's about, um, you know, just being good to people mm -hmm. and not cheating and so on. And then you have somebody who is a, like an exact example and picture of what you paint your children not to be like. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't stay up to watch the um, results come in. I woke up at around six something in the morning. And then I just, I just kept seeing it. I was like, no, you people won't do this to yourself. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Yes. And they did. Yeah. Up until the fact that, up until the last day before the elections, I still thought, you know, maybe definitely Hillary, you know. But then I had a conversation with someone and he was basically explaining to me how Hillary wasn't like the best candidate, you know, to represent the, the, the Democrats. The, the Democrats, Democrats, you yeah. understand? And that he knew that they would never vote for him. And I thought, I said, nah, bro, you can't say that. Da, 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 da. Who's going to vote? Because you know Twitter and Instagram, mm -hmm. they make it easy. Twitter politics. So you see, they, they remind you when he went to WWF, and yeah. they remind you about the bus, that the recordings from the bus. Yeah. And they remind yeah. you from yeah. some episodes on The Apprentice and some of his tweets. You know, they could dig out you yeah, know, anything. You know, they would dig out tweets from, mm -hmm. you know, all you have to do is just search yep. and say, you know. Yep. So, you know, and I thought about all of this and I said, no, Americans won't see this and still vote for him, you know. But when the results started coming in, I said, oh, he's won Ohio. He's won New York. I was like, okay, you know. And, and I figured that, you know, he was dedicated if we don't if we put it and that kind of man that has gotten so much trump towers and all of he's that he's always been able to yeah get he's always he's he always able to get what he wants and he was so sure about it you know mm -hmm. he was so there was this confidence that you know he just I exhumed i don't know <coughs> no, i think he, he was though i don't know that he necessarily thought. i think he knew that he had it in the bag i don't think that he i did. think he knew I okay disagree. please express to us <laughs> but, no, no no i don't think he i don't think he was sure and, that he was going to get it and I feel that way because of some of the things that I've heard and seen mm. afterwards. Mm -hmm. him, not, him not knowing, his team not knowing that they would have to hire staff, mm. the full staff in the White House, him not knowing that. Him saying that he had to Google, that he, he didn't have time during the campaign to Google to Obamacare. Yeah. And oh, now he's done it. And actually, oh, they've got some good points in there. Things like that make me feel like you joke. weren't really sure that you were going to get in there, mm. even if you thought you had a good chance. Mm. Obviously, you wouldn't, you wouldn't start something if you didn't think you had a good chance mm. of getting it right, but you probably weren't 100% sure that I got it in the bag. Because if you had, right off the bat, to be you would know who your you know, main people were going to be, right? So, yeah. I mean, there's just a lot to, there's a lot to kind of to unravel in this, and I'm sure yeah. we'll talk more about it. But we're going to go on a quick break now and just simmer down for a little bit. We'll see you guys right after this. Welcome back, guys. We are still talking about the Trumpanization <laughs> <laughs> of America. And, you know, I'm thinking, what do you really think? Let's discuss how it affects Nigerians. Because Nigerians really, really got um, crazy about it. Mm. Oh, my God. I was calling some guy. He said, oh, I'm, I'm really depressed right now. I'm like, bro, I'm calling you for business. Can you, can you speak to me? Which one you're depressed? <laughs> I don't understand. You know, so how does it affect the common Nigerian? Okay, I'll say this. Mm. I, I think those of us, mm. some of us are in a bit of a bubble, in a sense. Mm. Yes. Those of us who are always on social media, who mm -hmm. are always online, I feel like we kind of got sucked into... I mean, in, in life, obviously, you're aware of you know, current affairs and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff, but a lot of us that are on social media are not every Nigerian. Mm -hmm. I don't know that the person who is outside just trying to, you know, just trying to work for like, their daily bread is bothered about Trump. It's mm. us who are always on Twitter or always mm -hmm. on Instagram that are maybe, or maybe those of us who might have lived there or, ha or travel there often and mm -hmm. things like that, that, that bothered. So um, I don't know that it affects all of us the way we think it affects all mm. of us, like every Nigerian. I don't know that all of us are bothered about mm. it. But those of us who are bothered, I, I think it's more, it's more that when, not all of us are looking at, oh, what policies are he, you know, mm -hmm. what policies are, is he gonna put into place? Mm -hmm. um, what are the things that he's going to say about Africa or Nigeria or mm. what trade deals, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know that we're necessarily thinking all in thinking that in that direction yet. I think right now we're still in that whole emotional, oh, America, <laughs> you did this. All the yeah. black America video videos talking I, about it moving back. So it, again, <laughs> like I said, I didn't stay up for the, to mm -hmm. watch it because um, I mean, I love America and stuff like that, but I wasn't super caught up or as, as attached. Mm -hmm. um, 
and I was concerned more about you know how this was going to affect the dollar. Um, How's it going to affect the dollar? The dollar, yes. We <laughs> already um, have dollar problems, you know. <laughs> that it was going to just um, mm -hmm. humble the dollar a little bit. Um, but like you said, on social media, that everybody just kind of we got we got sucked mm. in to the point that I had to ask myself, why are you so? like involved yeah. mm -hmm. um it's you don't live there mm -hmm. um un unless if you know the policies and and stuff are in line with your work or gonna mm -hmm. in some way or form Directly. like reshape your mm -hmm. life yeah why are you like freaking out yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I, okay I, I think some of the comments trump made uh, in the in the uh, during his campaign uh, mm -hmm. definitely got nigerians more interested of course uh, talking about deporting 13 million yeah. uh, undocumented uh, immigrants mm -hmm. living in America. Uh, a whole lot of Nigerians have people living in America. Of course. Some of them documented, some of, a whole no lot of them not to documented. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and, and, and that aroused a, a whole lot home. of um, mm -hmm. interest, uh, thinking, OK, so are these people going to come back home? Uh, we, a whole lot of people still don't know he was talking about undocumented immigrants. Mm -hmm. uh, a whole lot of people just thought, okay, if you're not American, if you're not white and you're living in America, you're coming back home. Yeah. So that definitely generated a whole lot of um, attention mm -hmm. to his campaign and then to the election in general. And then also talking about uh, for the few that are interested in foreign policy, um, we saw the situation uh, during um, Blue uh, Jonathan's era where hmm. uh, Nigeria wanted to purchase hams to fight Boko Haram yeah. and the US had to veto that. Uh, so now a, whole, a few uh, of us are thinking, so what is this guy's approach going to be? Is he even going to care about Boko Haram in Nigeria? Mm -hmm. We had the situation during uh, the Chibo girls kidnap where America sent troops to Nigeria to help That's right. find the girls for a brief period in Sambisa Forest. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody is now thinking, is this guy going to even care mm -hmm. about, uh, and we also have the gay rights, yeah. uh, which uh, the anti-gay law was passed during Gulag Jonathan's era. Donald Trump came on this uh, whole wind of wanting to reverse some of these LGBT rights. Yeah. And again, some people are thinking, how is that going to benefit Nigeria? So there is a whole lot, whatever happens in America, to a large extent affects Nigeria because uh, 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 our economy is based on the dollar and then yeah. the international market and a whole lot of other things. Right. But that doesn't, in total, explain uh, the bipartisanship that mm. Nigerians displayed uh, during the election. For a, for a few people, uh, it's because they perceived that Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton were against the uh, Gulag Jonathan administration, so this is like a payback. Mm -hmm. For a few people, they perceive that Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama were friendly to um, Mohamed Buhari during its own election. Okay. So this is like having a friend okay. uh, Hillary Lose. Clinton right. in the White House right, to right, right. Uh, maybe continue favors. Yeah, sorry, hold that thought, please. Mm -hmm. We're going to go on a quick break, and we'll be back in a minute. Hi guys, welcome back to The Spot, and um, today we are talking about President Trump. Um, <laughs> I think everyone has a moment when they, when they hear, hear that, um, yeah. that title. Mm -hmm. um, but what I wanted to actually talk about, um, aside from, so we mentioned immigration as being one of the um, issues that, talk, uh, that Trump um, highlighted. Um, terrorism, um, and then his fight against multiculturalism. Um, I wanted to know what you thought, like how, hmm, now I've lost my trail of thought first. <laughs> he did this to me. Um, okay, so in America, I have some friends who live there um, or who live here now and used to live there and always said that at least one person yeah so one person said to me that they always felt like uncomfortable even though they spent so many years living there um, or might have even been born and raised there but there was an air of you know being in America that that always reminded you that this wasn't home yeah do you agree yes I agree how, how do you how and do you do that I say, and this is something that I feel like sometimes a lot of Nigerians don't necessarily understand. If people haven't been racist towards you, I'm not talking about, oh, here, someone is doing, someone's talking down to you or whatever. 
if you haven't experienced racism, mm -hmm. it's difficult sometimes for you to grasp that it is a thing. I mean, someone is not just being overly mm -hmm. emotional. Mm -hmm. It's little things, it's big things. It's not just someone pointing at you and calling you the N-word. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's little things like, you know, a room full of, you know, you're, you're going to a store and out of everybody who's there, maybe you're the only black person and literally you have two security guards stalking you every step because they, they just as soon as you walk in, they think you're the one that's gonna steal something. Mm -hmm. Or you're walking down the street, you know, or something and someone's in your way and they refuse to move mm. because they, why should I move for them? Or you stand somewhere and, or you try and sit in the train and someone comes and they push into your space and they don't apologize or they don't say, excuse me. Mm. It's little things and it's big things. Um, and it sometimes depends on where you are. There's places who are, that are obviously, you know, there's, there's a great number of black people, so you don't necessarily feel out of place there, mm -hmm. but you might go to somewhere else. I've lived in Tennessee, I've lived in Texas. Where I lived in Tennessee, I said this story, we were one of a handful of black people in that area. We were one of a handful of black people in that church, for example. And I know the things that they used to say. Sometimes it's things that they don't mean, they don't mean bad. But it's like, they look at you like you're some, some sort of exotic animal. Oh, your <laughs> hair, or like if I had yeah. braids. Oh, I've never seen that volition coming to root in your hair. And mm. it's little things like that. And people don't necessarily get it on if, if they maybe haven't, they haven't experienced, experienced it. it. So you know that you are different. And you're made to feel that different. you're different. Now, sometimes because you're different, somebody at work might look at you and be like, eh, no. And sometimes because you're different, a teacher won't be quick to give you a high grade because they feel like you might have, you probably cheated, probably cheated. <laughs> because uh -uh, you must be. Mm -hmm. I saw someone tweet about that, you know, a while ago. So yes, I get that sense, you know, for as long as I've been visiting and lived, and as long as I lived in, in America, I always knew that I was different. It wasn't because, well, because I'm Nigerian. Black is black is black. So there is that air. And when you have somebody who, who stokes the fear of people who feel like different is beneath mm -hmm. them and different is wrong then you will have fear of that person being the one in charge of everything yeah. in your country especially when everything in your country they still have problems obviously you know there's the killing even of when black, a black man was president even when a black man fear, was president so, so imagine mm -hmm. somebody who who in your mind and in my mind doesn't really appreciate black people mm -hmm. he's not going to give priority to the things that you feel that you you know that you, you need. need so yes the answer I to agree <laughs> to what you were saying. Yeah. But so, a little bit emotional, like. Yes. <laughs> um, I mean, but yeah, we, so, I was going to ask, uh, you yeah, know, I, I, what he I, thought. I, yeah. I, th I think uh, the, is the issue of um, racism in America, um, all Donald Trump did was just to bring it under the magnifying glass. Oh, yeah. It has always been there. Yeah. Uh, but it d definitely do doesn't help when you have a presidential candidate come forward to say, and not just about black Americans or Africans living Mexican. in America. Latinos. Latinos. Uh, I mean, this guy came forward to Arabs. say during his campaign that Mexicans are, are rapists. rapists. They are robbers. They, they brought crime to America. Yeah. I mean, there is no way anybody who is not white is going to feel safe mm. and comfortable under his presidency. Yeah. It's, it's a travesty that someone like that with all the statements, I mean, uh, let's not even talk about um, his, his, uh, all the things he said in the bus and everything. Mm. It's enough that you are talking about a multi-ethnic society and you are making a certain, se certain segments feel so uncomfortable, mm -hmm. and you are already criminalizing their existence mm -hmm. in this society. Yeah. So, yeah. Or, and uh, it, it showed in the polls, you can't have a president who uh, about 95% of African Americans did not vote for. Yeah. The, these are clear fault lines in this presidency already. So you have a large segment of the society mm -hmm. who do not like you. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. it's, it's, I mean, Obama was black mm -hmm. and he, he, it, it wasn't so clear. I mean, because his presidency wasn't so much, his campaign wasn't so much about him being black, mm -hmm. but about him bringing hope, That's bringing, right. bringing this new change sense and, of yeah. change to America. That yeah. No matter who you are, you can also aspire to be something. Mm. This is the exact opposite. This is no matter how, how degradable you are as a person you can also aspire to this office. Mm. So it, it, it has shown the, the two hands mm -hmm. of what is obtainable in America. You can be a good person, you can be, try to be all encompassing, try to be accommodating and become who you are. You can also take the other way, be a racist, be a sexist, mm. and also become the president. Yeah. So, it, it, I mean, a, a whole lot of women uh, feel 
because it, it still has uh, a litany of court cases around about mm -hmm. uh, right. sexual, sexual molestation, and sexual assault. Yeah. So you have you have certain segments of the society who feel uncomfortable, feel unsafe just by him being president, based on the things he has said yeah. and some of the things he has done before uh, his election. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, people still voted point. for him, though. That's what that's what I can wrap my head around. The fact that you know people actually went out in mass to vote I, for him. I know, remember is. having a conversation with Kemi Aditiba, the um, director, mm -hmm. and she said what hurts her the most is that her entire like world has been shaken. So everything she knew about the human being, and compassion, and um, just how we, she felt like we were all living sort of harmoniously has changed um so she just keeps asking herself they actually think like this yeah mm. across the board yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah um, it's crazy it is yes. crazy um but you mentioned the uh, the bus incident there, there were several low lights um of <laughs> low lights of trump's um campaign, campaign. um and, and hillary's to, to be fair to and be Hillary's fair, they, they were, I mean, she also said some things that people were very upset about. Yeah. So, because I think at this point, sometimes it seems as though we were demonizing him yeah. and un undeservedly and painting her as an <laughs> angel, which she definitely is not, was not. But I think it is fair to say what is fact, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what is true, what is fact, what is true, and what, what, what is observed. Mm -hmm. So... I, just to make that point there that I don't think we're, I don't think it's about making one person an angel and making the other person a devil, but basically saying these are the, 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 the bad things that were said and done and these are the things that were proved as fact doesn't make the other person perfect, but it does shine a light on the... the T mm -hmm. Talking about why uh, such a, a, a whole lot of people voted for him, I think he has like 60 million votes in the, in the election. Uh, that's, that's because he appealed to nationalism. Yeah. It, it, it works everywhere. That's what happened with Brexit, <laughs> making people feel like uh, there are these strangers in your land who are taking over your country and you need to take it back. Ah, before you go, yes, I do like that point, but we're going to have to come back to it after this break. You guys, please let us know what you think on social media and we'll see you in just a moment. Welcome back. You're still watching The Spot. And uh, we've been having a semi-somber <laughs> discussion about the man who will be president of the United States, Donald Trump. Yeah. And before the break, uh, Bukala, our guest, was talking about how he appealed to nationalism with his yeah. Make America Great campaign yeah. and, uh, and the so similarities to Brexit. It just reminded me of something that um, a conversation I've been having with uh, someone who said that they feel like we could run a similar campaign in Nigeria and they think that it would be strong enough for us to win. That they, so they thought that the biggest issue we have is that yes, we're, we're not unified, but also we open the doors and windows to just everybody and anybody to come and live however they want to live and set the rules and tones here, especially if you have the money to do so or the mm. influence to do so. So they reckon that if they ran um, a, you know, make Nigeria great again campaign, mm. get rid of everyone. So Who is well, everyone? Well, the, the, the expats, <laughs> the, uh, well, the non-Nigerians, get rid of everyone. Them, maybe, work, maybe we work. might have I, the I opportunity I think before that to, happens in Nigeria as a whole, it's mm. going to first happen in Lagos. Ah. Okay. Yes. Lagos is where I foresee a governorship candidate coming to say, Yoruba people, you need to take Lagos back. Mm. You need to send these people from here and these people from there back mm. to where they came from. Mm -hmm. They are here, they are making a, lot of, a whole lot of money. They are taking over your land. They are taking mm. over your mm -hmm. buildings. Mm -hmm. They are contesting for positions. Mm -hmm. That's what has been happening in America. Mm -hmm. I mean, a black uh, American came forward to contest for the presidency and won. And that's yeah. part... <coughs> Uh, uh, that sense of nationalism in them. Yeah. Right now in Lagos, we have people from other ethnic groups contesting for elective and uh, positions in politics and, 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 and doing a whole lot of things. And I foresee from what Donald Trump has been able to do and from what happened with Brexit, That's I foresee a very myopic governorship candidate coming forward 2019, 2023 or some, sometime soon and yeah. coming to say, Yoruba people, I want to appeal to your sense of ownership of uh -huh. Lagos. Lagos uh, is He's a man's own. land, it's not a no man's land. So I need you to take back your land and that's what I fear the most. And from Lagos, it's going to spread 
going to spread to other parts of the country and then we are going to also That's have... That's not even the type of... Um, doom and gloom! <laughs> <laughs> talking about. Yeah, but, 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 we all of us. We need to lighten up this place because... Yeah, let's, um, yeah. let's move on to some social media roundup. Before, <laughs> before we get in any kind of trouble because I can sense our viewers being like extremely tense right now. Yeah. So the first one is from underscore D underscore I D I, I guess, um, who says uh, you can actually hear a bit of the Nigerian sound and most of what you hear now in Africa is not exaggerated. So I, I guess we were talking about Nigerian music yes. and what the, the okay, African, the Nigerian cool. sound, sound was. So they commented on that. Um, uh, we also have a comment from David Clark, 1975, uh, that says, I have noticed that your program, I have noticed that your program is similar to some of the programs in the Caribbean. Okay. Okay. Um, cool. Please. We like that. We have some flavor, right? Well, yeah, we do. got okay. some flavor. <laughs> um, and the last one is from The Life of Olu. Absolutely in love with the spot. No British show ever comes close. Yay. Thank you. Well, mm. I'm on it now. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 But, okay, um, so we've, yeah. Uh, that's, our that's our social media. Social roundup. media. Do you have any comments or questions? Yeah. About? Um, do you watch the Ooh. show? Yes. Uh, okay. Everybody always says, and then you're like, okay, which show did you like? And they're like, um, <coughs> you know, the one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just teasing. Yeah. You have a question? Can you give us some tips on how to better manage our reputations online? Hire yeah. him. Hi. Personal Hello. reputation? How, how to better manage our um, reputations online? Um, Google search yourself every two weeks, see what comes up. Wow. Okay. Every two weeks. One, two, three, four. Okay. People say stuff about you that you, you, you don't, don't know what they're talking about. People drop comments in the, in, in, in the comment section of blogs. Mm -hmm. They mention your name mm -hmm. for issues you don't even know anything about. Okay. And these are things you need to keep track yes, of. Lamide so did not steal those tomorrow. Sometimes you need to write <laughs> How can I shut down the blog? He wants to like, shut down the entire blog. He said, let me shut it down. just shut it down? Like, you know, if, if, <laughs> if they have your intellectual property, you can mm -hmm. write uh, to their web host oh, but it's to have it taken yeah. down. And if, if, if that doesn't get done, then you can write to So basically, when you Google search yourself, right, and you see comments that you don't like and all of that, what's the quickest thing that you could do. If it was dropped on a blog, you can write to the blog owner to have the comment removed. Mm. I laugh in Spanish. <laughs> and blog owners actually they don't do that. To that. Uh, based, depending on how persistent you are and mm. how serious the issue is. Okay, so basically if I had you, you know, okay, you, you have handle me that. Because okay. I have the contacts, I have relationships with these people, then okay. it becomes easier. That's what, that's why I make the money I make. Hmm. Nice. He hmm. said, that's why I make the money I make. So you know Ooh. he's making some things. No, he, I mean, I, I, okay. I mean, you could tell. That's, that's why we're in business. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it works. So yeah, you need to. It, it becomes easier because then with a phone call, I can say, this person is my client. This comment is not true. And I would need to have it removed. So hmm. that's. OK. Yeah. What are some other tips you have? So Google search yourself every couple of weeks to see what's being said about you yeah. and just kind of keep on top of your online I guess presence or presence, know what, yeah. yeah. Okay. What what other um, a couple of other things? You might want to also delete old pictures on Facebook. Ah, okay. Yeah. Just I blocked just, that, just just go yeah. back uh, 2008, 2009. So they can't use it again. Because we weren't so conscious of our identity yeah. and our image then, so mm. we we've, we've posted pictures Set that. I went on the and on there. I saw pictures no, there. And you don't want these I pictures coming the account. account. <laughs> <laughs> so you might want to delete some of them. Mm. And My eyebrows just be generally careful about what you put out on the internet because. Uh, can people come use back. a whole lot of this yeah. information to do other stuff. Most yeah. definitely. Yeah. All right. Well, it's time for us to go. It's been an interesting show. Um, and our guest, Bukola Gunyemi, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank really you appreciate so your time and your insight. Thank you. Um, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the show as we <laughs> talk about uh, President Trump. We'll see you guys next time. Toodles. See bye you guys. Bye. So please help us sign on. Yes, wall. please sign our wall. Some There's chalk, chalk in the blue, there. candle okay. holder on the on the left, and you can just write your name wherever. Mm.